Good morning, students. Uh, this is Dr. Swati Goswami, and I'm assistant professor in Department of Microbiology, School of Science, Art University. Today, I'll be taking a very important topic in context of NEAT as well as in uh, in personal life as well, and this is human reproduction. So, uh, first, when we Whenever we talk about the human reproduction, you should know that uh, the humans are the sexually reproducing and viviparous in nature. And before uh, going to deal in detail about the human reproduction, it's very important that we should know the various terms which are, which, which are used scientifically. So the first term which is used is gametogenesis. Gametogenesis, this gametogenesis is actually the reproductive events in the human, uh, which includes the formation of the gametes. It includes the formation of gametes. Okay. So this, the process follows gametogenesis. In case of male, it gives rise to sperms, and in case of female, it gives rise to the ova. The transfer of the sperm into the female genital tract, this process is called as insemination. This process is called as insemination. And after that, uh, the fusion of the male and the female gametes takes place. And this process is called as fertilization, which leads to the formation of zygote. It leads to the formation of zygote. This is followed by the formation and the development of blastocyst and this blastocyst it, atta it attaches to the uterine wall and the, the process of attachment of this blastocyst with the uterine wall is called as implantation. Okay? After this implantation the embryo development takes place and this embryo development is called as gestation the process follows gestation and after that after this gestation nine nine months of gestation period the delivery of the baby takes place and the process of delivery of baby is called as perturation as well as perturation so these are the specific terms these are the specific scientific terms which are used in order to describe the human reproductive system or you can say the various stages in the human body. The reproductive events in the human body takes place or you can say occurs in the puberty stage, occurs in puberty, okay? And there is remarkable difference between the reproductive events which takes place in the male as well as in the female. For example, uh, the sperm formation. The sperm formation is continuous in case of old men and uh, the form whereas in female or you can say in women the ovum formation it ceases after 50, year, uh, 50 years around the age of 50 years so this is not a continuous process now i'll deal one by one in detail about the reproductive systems the first one is the male reproductive system uh, here in this, the, in case of male reproductive system, the male reproductive system is located in a specific region called as pelvic region, is called as pelvic region, At any, and it includes a pair of testes along with the accessory, uh, this accessory ducts and glands and the external genitalia. Okay, so this is a figure which gives the information of the whole reproductive or uh, reproductive system of the male this is the ureter next to it is a seminal ves uh, vesicle next to it lies the urinary bladder next to it is the vas defensive defense next to it is prostate this is bulbo urethral gland next to it this is the ejaculatory duct this is the penis this is the urethra and this is the gland, gland penis and this is the foreskin. Uh, a sac-like structure, this is a sac-like structure is called as scrotum and within this scrotum lies the 
test is. And the, the most important part here is that this scrotum is, is lying outside the body. The reason is that uh, the temperature which is required to make this test is functional is, is a two degree less than the normal body temperature. Here in this, when we see the part of the testis is opened to show the inner uh, details. So this is the ureter. Next to it, you can see this is the urinary bladder. This is the seminal vesicle. This is the post -reach. Next to it, this is the bulbo urethral gland. This is the urethra and this is the gland penis and this is a foreskin. This is the testis. Now, this testis is actually, when we see the inner part, you can see here, the, the, here it contains the apridate MS. Next to it, this is the vas efferentia, vas efferentia. Next to it is the reti testis. And next to it, this, these are the testicular lobe, lobules. These are the testicular lobules, okay? So this is the whole structure of this testis in detail. Now coming to the next part, this is, here we'll see the section of seminiferous tubules. Okay, we'll see the structure of seminiferous tubules. These seminiferous tubules, you can see here, it contains the interstitial cells. Next to this interstitial cells, here it lies the uh, spermatogonia. This spermatogonia is converted to spermatozoa. Um, here, a special type of cells called as Sertoli cells are present, which nurture the spermatozoa. Okay, so this is how well, this is the structure which gives the information of seminiferous tubule. So, based upon this whole lecture. We are here is a question for you. I'll give you the 10, uh, ten seconds for this to give the answer. Okay, so many of you have given the answer and the answer to this uh, question is first the question is the question is the fi the question says the final release of the sperm from the seminiferous tubule is called it's called as spermiation it's called as spermiation yani ki first one is the answer okay now I'll deal with the female reproductive system. So this female reproductive system, it is actually, this female reproductive system, it consists of a pair of ovaries along with a pair of oviduct and uterus, cervix, vagina, and the external genitalia, which is located at, at the pelvic region, okay? These parts of the system, along with a pair of mammary glands, are integrated structurally and functionally to support the process of ovulation, fertilization, pregnancy, birth, and child care. Okay, so I'll deal with this one by one. So, this is the whole structure, it gives the information of female reproductive system the first this is the ure ureters next to it is the urinary bladder this is the pelvic symph symphysis next to it this here you can see this uh, ure uh, ureth ureters is followed by the cervix and uh, there's uh, vagina this is the vaginal orifice this one is the Le, uh, labium majora this is the labium minora next to it lies the clitoris and this is urethra and this is anus 
this is the rectum. So this is all about the female reproductive system which is present in the pelvic region. Okay, now uh, this is the figure which gives the information of the female reproductive organ as such. And here you can see this actually, uh, this whole structure is actually, you can say it is inverted pear shaped structure, which uh, I'll, de I'll start explaining it from lower from lower to upper okay so the first one is this is the vagina this is the opening next to it lies the cervical canal this is the cervix next to it this is the ut uterine cavity or you can say it is a uterus this uterus contains three layers the innermost is the endometrium next to the it lies the myometrium and next to it the outermost is called is perimetrium this is the cervix okay this is the ovary this ovary is is actually is attached to the fimbri and this fimbri is further attached to a, a common duct which is called as a fallopian tube and this fallopian tube is having three different parts the this is called as in infundibulum this is next to it is ampulla next to it is istham, isthmus okay so this is these three are are actually the are actually the parts of fallopian tube this is the uterine fundus so next now on the mammary glands. The mammary glands are actually, these mammary glands, there's a structure that gives the information of mammary gland and these mammary glands are, uh, the female has a pair of mammary gland and these are very important. The most important thing is that they, they are involved in the lactation process where the, fee, uh, the mother feeds uh, the baby. Here in this, uh, it is, uh, you can, when you see the structure, it is allura. This here, this is allura. The, next to this, this is the nipple portion. This is a lactiferous duct. We are having lactiferous duct. This is ampulla. Next to it is the memory glands. Next to it lies the memory alveolus. And next to that lies the memory lobos. And for, uh, this is all surrounded by the fat cells. This is the rib portion and this is the muscle between the ribs and the portion here lies the pectoralis major muscle. Pectoralis major muscle. So this is the hole which gives the information of the mammary glands. Next uh, here, the next is now we have the question for you all. I'm having the question for you all from this section, and uh, I'll be giving you ten seconds for this. So start. Okay, uh, many of you have given the answer. So the answer to this question is, first the question says that the secondary sexual structure or you can sexual characters develop in the female because of the, these are actually the hormone and the answer correct, the correct answer to this question is estrogen. Then the first one is the correct one, that is estrogen. So, coming to the next portion, gametogenesis. Gametogenesis here, the gametogenesis, as I've told you, the gamete formation. So, in this, uh, here is the seminiferous tubules. So, I'll, here this figure gives the information of uh, the 
seminiferous tubule how the gametogenesis takes place inside this so so the, here it is spermatogonium this is the spermatogonium spermato from this spermatogonium there is formation of prime uh, primary spermatocyte followed by secondary spermatocytes then spermatids formation and a spermatozoa formation so here in this uh, this uh, there is one additional cell is there as well as sertoli cells and these sertoli cells are important in the context that they give they nourish the primary uh, spermatocytes sec, uh, secondary spermatocytes and spermat spermatids as well as spermatids so this is all about the gamete gametogenesis in uh, in seminiferous tubule uh this is the figure which gives the information of the of the structure of the sperm so this the structure of the sperm is actually basically divided into three parts the first part is the head next to it lies the neck portion and next to it lies the tail the head portion is having three contents in it the the outer the outer layer this is the called as plasma membrane the tip is called as acrosome the tip is called as acrosome and next to it lies the nucleus containing chromosomal material is a nu nucleus which contains the chromosomal material next to this head lies the neck and this neck is followed by middle piece this middle piece contains the mitochondria it is the energy source for swimming it is an energy source for swimming and this followed by tail so this is all about the structure of the sperm now coming to the next one next part here we'll discuss about the follicular development follicular development in in female so here you can see the various structures this is the blood vessel next uh, here the first is the follicular formation the primary follicular formation in this primary follicular formation this is followed by the tertiary follicular formate for a um, follicular formation which shows the antrum in it and uh, it is this antrum is a fluid fill sac like structure there is uh, uh, after that there is formation of uh, the next stage that is called as graphene follicle graphene follicle this graphene follicle after this graphene follicle what happens the ovulation process takes place where the ovum which is present in it is released outside and it behind it leaves a structure which is called as corpus luteum is called as corpus luteum okay so this is uh this figures give is uh, gives the information of how the follicle are developed and how the ovum is released after ovulation and the formation of corpus luteum next there is a lot of difference between the spermatogenesis and oogenesis as i have told you in the first two slides In the second, or you can say in the second slide, I've told you about there's a major difference. So here we'll see what is actually the major difference. Okay, uh, first we'll see the chromosome number per cell that is 46, and is uh, reduced to 23 and 23. So first we'll deal with the spermatogenesis. So at puberty in male, spermatogonia is there. This spermatogonia mitotic differentiation. will take place after this mitotic differentiation primary spermatocytes are formed these primary spermatocytes after first meiotic division is is uh, converted to secondary spermatocyte this secondary spermatocytes after the second meiotic division are uh, they form the spermatids and these spermatids after differentiation process they they form the spermatozoa okay so these are the various stages first is spermatogonia from spermatogonia primary spermatocytes prior from primary spermatocytes secondary spermatocytes from secondary spermatocyte sperma, spermatid formation and after that spermatozoa formation so this all takes place in 
case of spermatogenesis in male coming to the second in that is a female process here you can divide it into two part fetal life and the second one is called as adult reproductive life in this fetal life what happens oogonia will be there and there is uh, mitosis mitosis differentiation will take place and there is primary oocyte formation will be there primary oocytes will be formed after uh, this this is the process where the fetal life is there and in that it is already done after that birth will takes place childhood will be there and the puberty process and wow. after that there is adult reproductive life so here what happens the primary oocytes are already there inside the fetal life after that first mitotic division takes place it is it is completed prior to the ovulation process okay after that uh, what happens the secondary oocytes are formed there will be uh, any uh, unequal division which uh, will takes place there will be formation of first polar body and the secondary oocyte after that the second uh, from that second oocytes ovum is is formed and this ovum is here also there is a irregular uh, differentiation will take place and you will be getting secondary polar body and the ovum okay so you can see here there is a drastic difference between the spermatogenesis and the oogenesis now comes to comes the menstrual cycle the menstrual cycle is very important in the female reproductive cycle because it it actually nurtures the fetus okay developing fetus uh, the first menstruation cycle gets the first menstruation begins at puberty and is called as menarche and what it is called as it is called as menarche in human in human female the menstruation is is a repetitive process and an average interval of this it is 28 to 29 days what it is it is 28 to 29 days is the average uh, you can say average interval of the menstrual cycle the cycle of the event which is starting from one menstrual till the next one is called as menstrual cycle what is called as is called as menstrual cycle this is the figure which gives the information of the menstrual cycle the ov uh, ovulation events and the pituitary hormone levels very very important exam point of view here you can see the, these are uh, these are the days 1 3 5 7 9 11 13 15 17 19 21 23 25 27 28 29 30 31 32 33 34 35 36 37 38 39 40 okay so from 1 to from 1 to 5 there is menstruation is there menses is there this the this is the uterine uh, event is taking place okay then we have the follicular from 9 to 13 there is follic uh, follicular phases there that is uh, proliferate you can see it's a proliferative phase next to it is the from 15 to 29 is called as luteal phase also called as secondary phase and next to it after 29 there is next cycle will begin okay so here you can see here the, the ovo, uh, ovarian hormone hormone level in this there are two types of hormones which are acting progesterone and the estrogen very important progesterone you can see the level of progesterone increases from after day 15 and it increases and it decreases after 29 whereas in the case of estrogen you can see here the there is increase in the level after 11 day and there is fall there will be fall will be there at the 17th day and it will increase again and decrease on 29th day okay and this plays a very important role as the ovulation events is are actually based on these two specific hormones the develop, developing follicle follicles will be there the mature follicles will be there when the follicles are mature and the ovulation has to occur in that case estrogen level is very high 
after that there is formation of uh, develop developing uh, corpus luteum will be there and regressing corpus luteum in that case you can see here there is progesterone level is high and also there is level increase in the level of estrogen okay when we talk about the pituitary hormone level here fsh and lh okay here you can see uh, this fsh from it increase from the increasing point it decreases and it increases sharply at the ovulation stage at, at 13 to 15 days okay and after that it decreases and then it again increases whereas in the in the lh here in this there is it is decrease it is in earlier days it decrease it is in the decrease stage and it will in and it increases in the fifth, uh, four, uh, 14th day and after that again it decreases and it decreases okay so this is this figures gives a very inform very in this figure is very informative which gives a, gives all the various stages in the menstrual cycle which gives the information of uterine events ovarian hormone levels then ovulation event and the pituitary hormone level okay so these are very important this case so coming to the next one fertilization and implantation in this during population or coitus during population or coitus that is a process semen is released by the penis into the vagina this is called the process called as insemination because called as insemination okay here what happens the motile sperm it swims and it passes through the through the cervix and it enters the uterus and it and finally it reaches to the ampullary region of the fallopian tube okay after that what happens the fusion of the sperm with the uh, with the ovum will takes place and this is process called as fertilization after fertilization or you can say during fertilization process what happens the sperm come in contact with the zona pellucida uh, layer of the ovum for the fertilization process or you can say that during the fertilization process what happens the sperm come in contact with the zona pellucida layer of the ovum now here at this you can see here i have given this figure where you can see here these are the various sperm where come they are coming in contact to the ovum and they interact with the zona pellucida okay this is this layer is called as peri, uh, perivitelial peritoneal space and this is the cells of the corona radiata cells of the corona radiata okay so this is the this is how actually the sperm come in contact with the zona pellucida and after that it enters inside the ova okay this figure this figure gives a very important process that how actually the ovum is coming in contact with the uh, sperm and the fertilization process takes place and after that how the various stages are formed and within the uh, fallopian tube so here the first one is this is the this is the ovum this uh, the sperm come in contact with the ovum and it enter inside the ovum after that this thing the fusion of the nuclei will take place from there the two cells are formed from these two two four cells are formed from this four cells eight cells are formed and this is called as morula stage what is called as called as morula stage and after this morula stage there is a, there is blastocyst formation is takes place and this blastocyst it it get implant it get implanted in, inside the uterus it get implanted inside the uterus at uh, 6 to 12 it and the, this implantation takes place from 6 to 12 days at least after fertilization process okay now after that the, you can see this is the blastocyst and from this 
the various other cells are formed so this is all this is all about how uh, transport of ovum fertilization and the passage of of a growing embryo through fallopian tubes fully fallopian tube takes place and how the blastocyst is implanted inside the uterus uh, uterus and get inside the uterus wall now fetal and placental circulation this plays a very important role here the fetal and placental circulation in this you can see this is the placenta and these are the various you can see here this is the umbilical vein this is the umbilical vein and this is um, umbilical arteries are there and this is the umbilical cord and this is the figure of the fetus at 8 weeks okay so this is this is this figure gives a information of uh, how the placenta is attached to the umbilical, umbilical cord and to the fetus and here you can see the important part is that the two umbilical arteries and one umbilical vein is there two umbilical arteries and one umbilical vein is there for the baby for the fetus okay so this is the this is a figure which gives the information of the placental circulation how the placental circulation takes place which uh, which shows the fetal capillaries which is bath into 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 the blood from the maternal circulation okay so here you can see this is a maternal uh, endometrial vein this is the ma maternal endometrium arteries okay these uh, this is the fetal cap uh, capillaries there is a fetal capillaries these are the endometrium and this is the maternal blood okay this uh, within this maternal blood the fetal capillaries are uh, are attached next to it here you can see these are the umbilical veins and and uh, these two are the umbilical arteries so this figure gives a information how actually the uh, within the placenta the placental circulation take is taking place and the fetal uh, capillary is actually uh, dipped inside the blood from the maternal circulation so this is all about the our uh, human reproduction and uh, it is very very important each and every uh, point in this is very important whether it is uh, we we'll, uh, whether we deal with the male reproductive organ or with the female reproductive organ organ in the context of uh, your uh, exam or in the personal personal development so your best of luck for your uh, for your neat exam and if you have any queries you can uh, write down in this chat box and surely you will be getting the answer to it thank you thank you so much